pop convention, pop culture convention was at the Remington Park. They do horse races, have a casino here and stuff. Arrow in Tulsa. over here. Got some indie wrestlers over here. They're probably up there wrestling right now. That's why they're not at the booth. Got some figures at Old Republic. Artwork here. Let's see what's oh, some wrestlers back here. Looks like there's some more stuff on this side. Tracks down there. Thank you. Pretty big convention. Got some more collectibles over here. Lots of cards. Some bubble stuff. Poppers. Handmade items. Some airbrush tattoos. Some, looks like tea or some, I don't know what that is, sage to burn. Some cutouts, pretty cool. Galactic collectibles, bunch of toys, some jewelry over there. Some handmade items. Looks like coasters galore. Some handmade stuff. Pop booths. Some more handmade stuff. Some purses. Lots of comics. Kenny's comics. Looks like a tarot reading. There's the Green Ranger right there, Jason David Frank, Jeremy London Spoon. Yeah, I'll be the one call you, Dan Elton. Yeah, okay, I've even got a vampire cape and everything. Yes, yes. Susanna Malone, Dougie Bell, Ava Angelo, Bushwhacker Luke. Jake the Snake. 
So we get the barber beef cake. Okay. Jose Canseco. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you can Sorry. Sorry. I've got some leather work here. Lots of cool artwork. Curious cryptic. Pokemon cards, Jason masks, some magnets. Man, I never thought this would be this big of a convention. Some autographs, frozen candy. Or freeze drying, Legos, T Mobile. Looks like some handmade art, some jewelry, some more collectibles. Scott Kincaid books. The bottom table Terrence. It's the sign for the Green Ranger. Some comic books, collectibles, jewelry, glasses. Got some awesome luchador masks over here. Walk back through here. It's a giant King Ghidorah Lego. Lots of pops. Some crystal figures, collectibles. Looks like patches and earrings and stickers and artwork. Blacklight. Oh, MUFON, Oklahoma MUFON. I'm actually part of that Facebook group. Some more twisted curiosities. Some phone cases. Cool Mandalorian art. Bunch of artwork. Cool handmade stuff. And then we got some bath bombs and stuff here. Soaps and crystals. And a mermaid. I guess the panels are upstairs. There's the casino. Found the panel room. How do you guys feel about meeting two of the top legends of all time of the wrestling federation? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's give a big round of applause and welcome to Bushwhacker Luke and Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. We're gonna hear some stories. You guys are feel free to ask any questions you have. And just don't ask them what the favorite color is or something like that, you know? I'd like to ask uh, Mr. DiBiase if, if after all these years, if everyone still has a price. Are you kidding? <laughs> Everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. <laughs> In Jim Ross's first book, he tells a story about how 
Leroy McGurk planned to shoot a young <laughs> Ted DiBiase for uh, dating his daughter. Uh, when did you find out that the boss planned to shoot you? Well, by the grace of God, I found out the next day <laughs> after it didn't happen. Right. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a true story. But it's 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 much much funnier when, when Jim tells the story because poor Jim, you know, had to you know put Leroy in the car, drive from Tulsa to Shreveport, and he said like he said when he tells the story, he said he said Leroy was you know because he's blind, and so you know he's he's smoking the cigar, the cigar's getting smaller, smaller, and it's dropping on his pants and burning holes in his. And it's, it's just, you got to, Jim, Jim, Jim tells the story much better than I can, but uh, uh, by the grace of God, I'm still here. I didn't get shot. But, you know, then at the time, uh, at that time, the top guys in Mid-South were like Killer Carl Cox, you know, Dick Murdoch, Bob Sweetan, those those were the guys. And those are some of the guys that in my early career I, I, learned, I learned a lot from. But like Murdoch, I mean, Murdoch and I were very close. Murdoch's actually the guy who got me booked in Mid South. <clears throat> and, uh, but what he would do to me, every time we'd come up to Tulsa, now this is post this, they would always bring Leroy McGurk into the dressing room to say hello to all the guys. And sure as crap, you know, you know Leroy would come and sit down, and Vic would look at me and and he said, hey, he, you know, like you, he's going to say, hey, hey, Teddy. They all called me Teddy then. And, and uh, he would go, hey, and I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> thank God he never said it. <laughs> yeah, thank God literally where he never got, got his hands on the gun. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's a, it's a true story. And I, I did for a while have a relationship with Mike McGurk. And we are still very good friends. So can you imagine that? A guy... Leroy wanted a son so bad, and he didn't get a son, and so he went named his girl Mike. Wow. Yeah. That's another true story. Wow. Yeah, yeah the, the, the one that she was the ring announcer for a while. Just one thing I have to leave you with. Never forget this as long as you live. Everybody's on a price! Blue million dollar man!
in the ring okay. is because we have to show that the women can still the show. Like I did. wrestling match, it's time to head out. Pretty fun convention. A lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. And I know they have a horror convention run by the same people coming up. So we'll probably see that too.